Hey folks, we are back with our XR600 project. So I wanted to show, I've got half the head ported. As you can see, I talked about a D-shaped port in the head here. You can see how it's straight. It looks like a letter D. Now if you go over to the stock side and look at it, it's just a round, you know, angle it in that way. You can see it's just a round hole. And you can see how much bigger it is. I'll show you with these calipers. If we take and measure this side and then you stick it over on this side it's like a quarter of an inch bigger also god damn <laughs> okay so i've got the new bronze guides in the head also i did half the head so half the head's ported half the and the valve job's done on half the head also i've got a four angle valve job i'll show you you can see i don't know if you can see but there's one little gray angle, which is the seat that the valve sits on. So we got one here before, which is a uh, 15 degree, a 45, then we got a 58 and a 75. So this hole is much larger this way as opposed to this one because I'm putting it in a one millimeter oversized valve in it. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to put the guides in it and regrind the other two seats in a few minutes. We got the cam back. From Megasite, I wanted to show you can see if you look real close, you can see how what they did to this cam. They they build up, they they weld them, they weld the uh, lobes, and then they regrind them to the grind of the cam that they wanted. So you can see the evidence there. That's pretty cool how they do that. And the reason why we're putting shorter, we have to put these are 80 millimeters, two, uh, two millimeters shorter, which is 80 thousands. From here up, they're shorter because this cam is going to depress the valve spring down closer and it mashes the valve, it mashes the valve seal and hits if you don't have shorter guides in there. So that's why we have to do that. And we're going to be boring this today too. So I'll show you how to, the final technique on boring the cylinder too. Okay, so now we're boring the cylinder. I've got the uh, head over there heating up in a little oven. We're going to drive the guides in in a minute, but I'll show you a little bit of this here. I just made a cut. I got a couple more to make. So we're going to bring that back up. We're bring the cut back up. Okay. So the piston measures with my micrometer four inch 13 thousandths and JE wants a finished bore of four inch 15 thousandths so that's two thousandths clearance they want between the piston and the cylinder so I'm going to hone this just under the size of the piston so it leaves me three thousandths to hone out to a finished 415 for a perfect cross hatch in, in size and will be properly you have to put this little extra weight on this boring bar when you get out this big because you'll get a little little chatter on the cutter if you don't put that weight on there. I usually make 20,000 cuts at a time so I'm going to go to 20 more thousandths which is going to bring it at uh, 409 so I'm only going to have very few thousands after this cut. Pretty critical to get this shit right because uh, if you overshoot it then the hole in the, the hole in the cylinder is too big and you can't use it so you have to make sure it's right here all right so let's go check our cylinder head. okay we're going to come over and check on the cylinder head i got a little hot plate and a box over the head we're at 240 degrees. I want to get this to 275 and then we're going to set it on the floor over there and knock the guides in it. I like to put it on the floor on a piece of cardboard so you don't get no bench bounce because <laughs> even with the head at 300 degrees and the guides are in the freezer, they still drive in pretty firm. This is the worst part of working on a motorcycle that I hate, putting in guides in the head, but I don't like doing it too much, but there's only four of them. About 270 degrees there. I'm gonna set this on the floor. Put this like that so I don't burn my knees. These just came out of the freezer. They got a little Teflon tape on them. Which is 
going to make a little seal when they seat into the top of the head. It comes with an O-ring, but it, it just mashes the O-ring out of there. I'm going to put a little assembly lube on the, on the guide, too. There she is. I just heard my barn bar stop too. All right, while that's reheating, let's go check out the barn bar. Is it a fire hazard, Jeff? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> All right, so that was the final cut. Now we're going to check out how this fits. You don't want it to fall in there. See that? It's like almost the perfect size. So now I've only got two and a half thousand or so to hone, out. to hone out. It'll be perfect and I'll show you how to hone it with a bore gauge. There it is. You can hear the difference. That solid hit, it's down. Done. Money. Yeah. Now I'll show you. You can't, you, of course, you can't grind the seats till you got the guides in there. This is a sunning hone. It's the, like the best one you can buy. It's 500 bucks just for this hone. A lot of hones come with a stone and a stone and a fiber and a, and a fiber wiper. They're no good. The thing wobbles. So you need aluminum and stones. It keeps it very, very stable. I only have to take two and a half thousandths out of this, so that's just a thousandth and a quarter on each side, so it isn't going to take much. Alright, so we're going to stop there for a second. The piston fits, but I can tell it's probably just got zero clearance. I'll put this on zero, zero it out. And then you go to the top, and you still want it to be on zero. See, it's like a, it's almost there, but that's how you make sure you're honing straight from one end to the other. You want it to stay on zero no matter where you put this. So, that's how I keep track of what I'm doing. So now I know this is on zero. That's the bore size set right there. Now you come over here. I use my vise just to hold this. This is set to the size of the piston. So I put it on here like this. And there you can see the difference right there. I've got about a, a thousandth and a half clearance, so I gotta hone it some more. that do like if you had too little clearance Jeff or no clearance well yeah if you if the clearance is too tight when this thing swells up the, the piston skirt will swell up and stick to the row right in a seize right? it'll seize yeah and if you get it a little too loose you know that's not good but it'll still be okay if you get it too loose then the piston skirt rattles and then you can hear the piston rattling in there so so it's important to get your clearance it's you know, it's, yeah is, really this, is it safe to say that a lot of garage decks fuck up their clearance Maybe you go, go too much on the, on the hone job and... Yeah, well, I've seen a lot of bore jobs that I've taken apart and they're honed way too coarse and they're not straight. You know, they they probably just got to hone and hone it and it looks good and send it. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a metric dial gauge. So every 10 lines is four thousandths. Because remember, one millimeter is 40 thousandths. So one tenth of a millimeter is four thousandths. So I'm looking to be just five lines difference, from, which is two thousandths. You can see right there when I rock my mic, I'm only three lines. I gotta go two microns further to get where I wanna be. That's how crucial this is. Microns. <laughs> Give me a little more juice there.
Yeah, that's, uh, I believe it's 330 grit with a crosshatch every, every quarter inch or so. So see what we're looking for is we want to keep that on zero everywhere when we rock this. Zero, come up the top, zero. It's like perfect. So I know that this thing is, I know this thing is round and there's no deviation from top to bottom. And there we are, five microns. Let me get that, you gotta get it right perfectly in the center. See, there it is, five microns. That's two thousandths clearance. So, I'm gonna have to say this is a pretty good board job. Two thousandths clearance and it's straight. And now you wanna check your ring end gap. So you just float these in the cylinder like this. Just have to piston in there and square it up. So you got a nice straight gap. And It's got ten thousandths on that ring, which may be just a skosh tight. Stick it in there, square it up. Yeah, they both got ten thousandths. I may, I, may, I think I'm going to loosen them up just only two thousandths. I want to give it twelve. I have a little deal over there. I put the ring on it, and it it grinds just the edge of it. So I'm going to open them up, just two thousandths each. These are my pilots from my different size valve guide. So it's got a little taper on it. You put it in there and it firms up. Sticks right there. Now we have to get this perfectly level. Now this is what you do. You take a set of calipers. And you measure your valve that you're grinding. See? Here, this valve is 37 millimeters. So I'm going to set this to 36. I'm subtracting one millimeter because when I'm done grinding, that's the width of the seat that I want. So if the valve's 36 and I'm making it to 35, that's going to bring each side down 20 thousandths. Because remember, 40 thousandths is one millimeter, so 20 on each side. I'm sub subtracting a millimeter. And this valve is the one that I already did. See how I got it placed perfectly? It's got a little mark on it, you can see. I took a little fine vial grinding compound, just a little bit, and, and just etched it just a little bit so I can see where I'm placed. I don't like using dicum, I just use that stuff. It doesn't scratch the valve or take any finish off it. So now I'll show you how this machine works. When we turn this on, you'll notice that it doesn't touch the whole seat at once. It orbits around it, so it doesn't eliminate chatter. So remember, I got these set at 35, so I'm looking, I'm looking for this outer ground edge to be 35 millimeters. And I, I still got quite a ways to go, so I gotta get that out to the width I want it before I work the other angles. This little unit here is called a PEG. It's from Italy. This little unit costs three thousand dollars, but you gotta have the tools to do this kind of precision work. All right, so my outer my outer lip is where I want it, but look how wide it is. It's three times the width I want it. So now, I go in the middle with a 58, which is this one right here. I go in with a 58 and I shrink that up to the, to the width I want it. And then I'm gonna put my 30 degree before the 45 and then I'm gonna have my 58 and 75, just like I did over here. Okay, so you can see how far, how wide my 45 is. Now I'm going in the center with a 58, which is gonna narrow band that seat because I don't want it that wide so we got the guides in there and when the seats are all done and we assemble this is this little sits here and when it's when it's hooked to the valve this one will go in here 
when this is assembled, you have to measure it from here to the bottom of that to the underside of this retainer. And it's supposed to be 1 inch 310 thousandths. So, I mean, you can change that by adding shims and stuff to, to get that assembled height. So that's another important thing we have to do when I'm done, when I'm done with this head. I'm going to install the cylinder in the head on the motor, and I'm going to show you how to check piston to valve clearance, and we're going to CC out the combustion chamber and check the compression ratio. But that's coming up. Single. Right, 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 it's right. done. Yeah. Because pounding that in, yeah. when you drive that guide in there. Does, does it shrink up a little bit? No, the, the, the end of the guide driver doesn't go all the way through the guide. It kind of lays in the middle of the guide. And while you're hammering on it, it's, it's nicking it a little bit ah, inside. So, yeah. so just give it a quick ream and it smooths it right out and fixes it. But this is a ream right here. Just run it in the valve guide a couple times and you're all set. Okay, so we're getting ready to assemble this 650 here. I've got the head all done pretty much. I got the valve job all done. I've got the shorter guides installed. The head is all ported. And would this light help a little bit here? I wanted to show. You can see the placement on the, where I've got the placement on the valves right here, the little gray area. That's where it's sitting on the gray area on the seat. And I've got a multi-angle valve job. I've got a 30, a 45, a 58, and a 75. So that's all set. I got my ream, my ream today. I ream, ream the guide so the valves fit properly. So I'm going to assemble this head in a few minutes, and we're going to pop it on the motor here. I've got some 80 thousandths solder sitting on the pistons in four spot where we're going to back the motor up just to there, put the head gasket on, tighten the head down, and just squish the solder back and forth, and you take the head back off and measure the solder, and that tells you your piston to head clearance. At the same time, though, I got the rings on the piston, and at the same time, I'm going to CC out the combustion chamber. I'll show you how to do that with my barrette over there. We'll be doing that in a few minutes. So the cam's all been welded and reground. The rocker arms have been hardened and refaced. They, they, they changed the angle on these rockers to just for the grind of the cam so they, so the spec card comes out, you know, it, it works the way it's supposed to be formulated. So it's a whole package. We got the heavy duty valve springs. I may have to slot the cam sprocket a little bit to gree it to get it to open at 26 degrees. We'll see when I throw a degree wheel on it. Okay, so we'll be back in a minute and I'll show you how to Check squish and compression ratio. Okay, so when you uh, are checking your CC combustion chamber, you have to know the uh, exact displacement of your engine. So how you do that is you multiply your bore times your bore times your stroke times pi, and that tells you your displacement. So I know we got a, a 102 millimeter bore. We're gonna multiply that by 102 again and then we're going to multiply that by the stroke, which is 82, and then we're going to multiply that by pi, which they say is the most important number in the universe. I guess it, it, measures, the, it measures the circumference ratio to, the, to a circle's di to the center of its diameter. I don't know. It's a formula used in mathematical stuff. That's all I know, <laughs> but it works. Okay, so we're going to, and now we're going to take that whole number and divide it by four, because we're working with a single cylinder engine. It's a 669, but the next number is a 7, so I'm rounding it up to a 670. So now we know our displacement's a 670, so now we can CC our combustion chamber. So we're at top dead center. All the valves are closed. And you're going to, I'm going to take my chemist barrette here. I'm going to fill it up. And we're going to CC out the combustion chamber. See how much fluid it holds. Yep, it's a little 10 weight fork oil and a little bit of mineral spirits. So I'm going to purge this down to zero. Right there, zero. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to fill the combustion chamber up to the to the two bottom threads of the spark plug hole. That was 50 cc's. It's going to take a little bit more. Right at the bottom of the spark plug. Right? So 50 and 16 and a half more. 50, 66.5.
what kind of equation are we pumping this into, Jeff? Okay, so now we have to take the displacement of the engine. Yeah. Add that amount to it, 66.5, and then divide the number by 66.5, and that'll tell you your compression ratio. How big's the piston? The displacement is 670. So now I'm going to go over here to my calculator. 70. We're going to add 66.5 equals, and then we're going to divide that number by 66.5. I like where this is going. 11 to 1 compression. Wow. The piston's 10 and a quarter, but by taking the base gasket out, it added some more, you know, we got the squish tighter. We're at 11 to 1 compression, so that's why I wanted to take the motor out and CC it out so I knew exactly where we were. So this will run fine on, you know, pump gas. I, I recommend 93 octane, but it's going to be just fine. So now I'm going to put the, I got to take this bag apart and clean all the fluid out of it. And then I'm going to put the top end, the rock around the cams, and we're going to degree the cam and check the piston to valve clearance. So that's our next step. So I'll be back in a few minutes. We got here. All right, so now I'm, I've got the engine all assembled, and we're going to check our cam time. And, and this is MegaCycle's timing card that they sent with the cam. They, they want the intake uh, valve to open up at 26 degrees before top dead center. So what we do is we take a degree wheel, we put it on the crankshaft, we zero it out, the piston's at top, and you zero out your valve lash. You don't want any clearance. And then we're going to rotate the motor till this moves one millimeter, because it says readings are taken with zero lash at one millimeter. So we're going to rotate this till that moves one millimeter. Here it goes, to 50 is a half a millimeter. And we're looking for 26. And you can see what we got. We're like 26 and a half, so. Now, this is a single overhead cam, so all the lobes are on one cam, so that's the most important number. If it's open in that 26, I can't do anything about the other numbers. If it was an intake cam and a separate exhaust cam, you can slot the sprockets and individually degree the cam separately. But when you're dealing with a single overhead cam, uh, I checked the, this one's open perfect and the exhaust is open in where they say within two degrees and the closing values are a little off but I can't do anything about it. That's done in the ramping, the uh, rock around ramp, the way the rock around ramps are ground. I mean, I'd have to send them back to MegaCycle and say, hey, these are off four degrees, you know, to mess around with that. But we're good. We're good. We got plenty of uh, piston to valve clearance. We got uh, six and a half millimeters. That's 260 thousandths. I mean, on some motors I've built, I've tightened the uh, piston to valve clearance right up to 40, in, 40 thousandths on the intake and 60 on the exhaust. This thing's not going to bend the valve. It's got plenty of clearance. And yesterday when I uh, CC'd it out, I put some solder in there on top of the piston, 80,000 stick solder. It just barely nicked them. So I got 80,000 piston to head clearance, which I could, I could tighten this up to 35,000, but then the compression would be up in the 12, 12 and a half area, which builds more heat. We don't want that. This thing only had 8.3 compression to start with. Now it's 11, so we're good. I'm confident this thing is going to be a pretty good running engine. So I'm going to put it in the frame today, and we're going to get it running later on. Well, then we're going to the dyno. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I also, these are a whole bunch of engines I built in the past. It's a whole notebook of engines and timing cards that I've kept. So this is the one on this bike here. I make notes of all the engines I build and what my clearances are, so I have reference to go back on if, if needed. Good thing to do is keep notes because these are. If I want to build another GSXR 1000 like I did a few years ago, I can look back and see how I set that motor up, and I can see the before and after power, and I, you know, I, I can copy my notes. Right on. Just like a professor. <laughs> okay, so we got this all back together. I'm ready to start it up for the first time here. 
I'm going to start it up. This bike holds two quarts of oil, but the frame, it, the oil goes in the frame and it only holds one. So I got it filled right now. I'm going to run it for 10 seconds and shut it off and then uh, top it off. Dino day, what do we have here, Jeff? Well, this is the day here. We've got this thing all done, it's on the dyno. We're gonna see you proofs in the pudding here right now. I'm gonna fire this thing up, warm it up a second, do a couple runs. Okay, so I'm uh, kind of excited here. Uh, definitely made it made 50% more power. Holy let, shit! Let me uh, get rid of the. Okay, so look at that before and after graft from 30 horsepower to 45. That would be a full 50% increase. I'm impressed. I'm I'm really impressed because, like I said in the first video, I did one of these before and I, I really didn't get that much results out of it. Well, it was an older one. It was an old XR600, but this thing really responded well. Now, the only thing we didn't do in this build was put a uh, XR's only header on it. This has the stock head pipe with uh, XR's only muffler on it. So I'm gonna put a challenge out to XR. This is a good, a good point. This bike is all done, dialed and done. So. Let's call XRs only and see if they'll uh, kick up a head pipe and we can test their pipe for them and show all our folks what a standalone bolt-on header pipe. We'll see if they're game for that. We'll give them a call. But hey, I'm really impressed. It basically has 10 horse more everywhere up until the top where it's breathing a lot better so it carries oh, yeah. the power further, Yes, look at longer. how, look at how just... this one rolled off. This one rolled off, you know, right here, and this one carried way over to here. So it's a completely different motorcycle now. Yeah, let's check the cursor, like right where the power starts to fall off, like right here. We'll click it right there. Let's get let's get some views on the video, and then we'll send it to XRs only and talk to the owner and see if he's willing to send us a head bike. Because I'm curious just to bolt that on and see if it does anything from here. Next plan, folks. We'll see you then.